Hey folks, this is Jake with Seattle Coffee Gear, and today I'm going to be sharing some quick tips to get the most out of your Breville Oracle Touch. The Breville Oracle Touch is kind of unique in the way that it grinds and tamps with the tamping fan integrated into the grinder, and I'm going to show you just a few things that may help you get a better shot experience or a better drink at the end of the day. The first thing is with the integrated grinder, there's no setting actually on the machine to change the dose of ground coffee. But there is a way to change how much ground coffee is going into your portafilter and getting tamped, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to take the portafilter, and you can use any kitchen scale. I got an Akaya Pearl here, but you can use any kitchen scale that has a tear function. And we're going to go ahead and place that down onto the scale. Tear that out, so we zeroed it out. And now I'm going to go ahead and weigh the dose that comes from the factory. This is exactly how this machine was set up from the factory. And I think it's going to be a little bit high. Let's find out. First, select your drink, of course. So the portafilter is pretty full, and the basket in here is pretty deep, so I'm assuming this is going to be quite a high dose, but let's see. So 24 grams. That's typically a little bit more than we'd want in a double shot of espresso. We'd be trying to get right around 20 grams at the maximum, so let's see if we can get that down just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and dump this puck out, and just give it a nice wipe out. And so I've got a clean portafilter. I'm just going to set that aside um, to actually get the dose down, how much ground coffee you have in the portafilter down. It's a little bit of a messy process, so be prepared to get your hands just a little dirty with coffee dust. It is espresso after all. So inside of the tamper, you are going to feel two ridges. And the easiest way to get at this is you're just going to put your thumb along the edge of this ridge and screw counterclockwise and you're going to feel the tamper fan starting to come out. And it takes quite a few turns, about 10 turns or so, to get this to drop out. But eventually, it will drop out. And here's your tamper fan along with the tamper fan connector that actually holds it and screws up into place. Now is a good time, if you haven't, to just give it a nice wipe down. You could even give it just a little bit of a wash. It's nice to keep these things pretty clean to make sure that they're tamping properly. You can go ahead and set the tamping fan, the actual fan piece aside. All you're going to want is this connector piece here. And it looks like this. And it's simply a Allen key screw and some threads. And what you're going to want, and this should be included with your machine, if you don't have one, you're going to need a two millimeter Allen key such as this. Uh, you're going to need to take these threads the actual threaded two millimeter portion and just unscrew that. It's just a set screw to prevent this from turning. And I dropped it. Found it. So I'm going to set that aside because you're not going to need it right now. And the way to lower your dose to ground coffee is actually to take this square-ish connector and unscrew it. You're going to want a few threads showing. More threads showing is going to be less ground coffee in your portafilter because it's actually dropping the tamper fan lower and therefore the machine is sensing that there is a uh, where it is full is actually going to be lower which will lower your ground coffee amount. So I'm going to do four threads showing because I found that that is a good dose on this machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and place the set screw back in so that you can tighten it down. And we're going to take that two millimeter hex key and just make sure it's nice and tight so it locks in the uh, threads in here. Now I'm just going to give this tamper fan a wipe. And we're just going to place the square portion back in the top of the tamper fan. And it can be a little bit tricky to do this. You're going to want to, um, if you're having difficulty, you're probably going to want to pull out the drip tray and just take a look underneath because there is a shaft that this goes up onto, and that's what you're going to be screwing it back onto. It's harder to get it back on than it is to get it off. I'm 
And then once you've got it threaded on there, you just want to go clockwise until you feel it to be tight. So it's about 10, 12 turns clockwise. And then it's tight. You'll feel it kind of spring back against you. That's when you know it's ready. So we're going to check the dose now that I've done the threads here on the tamper fan. So select any drink. And then I'm going to insert that portafilter and go ahead and grind. It's ready. So with that many turns, I would generally expect maybe one to two to three grams, depending on your exact uh, beans and grinder of reduction. So let's go ahead and find out. Like I said, I've already teared this scale with the empty portafilter prior to this. And wow, we've actually got 18.1 grams, which is right around perfect for a double shot. So with the five threads that I did, it actually took down the amount of coffee by five grams, so that might be a good reference to use one thread showing per gram. That's a little bit lower than I was expecting, but it's actually perfect for what I wanted. So 18 grams is the um, one of the most common grams uh, for a double shot, and we're going to go ahead and use that and keep that tamper fan setting as it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and dump out this puck. And now onto the grinder the actual grinder itself. So when you get this machine or when you've been using it for a while, one thing that's important to know is you're going to want to keep it as full as possible. The grinder, once it gets down below a certain level, has something called popcorning. Uh, it's unavoidable in a grinder that's styled like this. It makes the beans bounce when there's not enough weight of the beans pushing down on here. I found in my testing with this machine and with the other Oracle, the non-touch model, that you probably, if you can, try and keep the beans above the little lip here, right about an inch of beans in the hopper. It's going to give you much more consistent results and it's going to give you better shots at the end of the day. If you keep it below that, the shot time is going to vary along with the shot volume. Well, the shot time is fixed, but the shot volume is actually going to vary quite wildly. So it's better to keep this as full as possible. Um, if you are using different beans, you can always, of course, unlock the hopper, pour these beans back in, and then lock it back in place and put the new beans in there. And yeah, so just keeping it fuller is, of course, going to be better for your shots at the end of the day. The next thing to talk about with the Oracle Touch is going to be the grind size itself. So. When we, especially when we have customers that are asking us how to get this dialed in, they tend to start really fine in the fine range, like nine, seven, six. But what we found with the Oracle and the Oracle Touch is that a little bit coarser, um, perhaps with a little bit higher of dose with the tamping fan adjustment that I showed here, actually does provide a better shot quality than going finer with less coffee. So let me explain. The grinder settings here, they go, when you turn the knob, they go all the way up to, I believe it's 50, 45. And you, they go all the way down to one, of course. But we found that the most ideal grind size for the beans that we've been using, which is like a medium roast, darker roast, you might need to go a little bit coarser, lighter roast, you might need to go finer, is actually going to be right around like a 15 to a 20. So I, if you're starting off with this machine and you're having a little bit of trouble dialing it in, just start 15, 16, 17. Lower that dose from the factory just a little bit. And I think you're going to have a much better time of getting this all dialed in. The next thing is the demo mode on the machine. So there is a demonstration mode that some people might notice when the machine is out of the factory. And it, when it's going, when it's like the machine is on standby, you might see it flashing almost like it's in a demonstration. This is a super easy thing to change, but we've seen lots of customers' videos and pictures where the demo mode's still on, so I thought I'd talk about it here. When you're in your menu, you can just go to the home and to the settings, and when you scroll all the way down, you're going to see demonstration mode right above factory reset. Just click that, 
And if yours is set to demonstration, you know, you're welcome to have your machine set up however you'd like. But I do like the screensaver, which just brings up a purple screensaver with Breville. Uh, it's just a little bit easier on the eye. Not a lot of people, or there are some people that may not know about this, so I just thought I'd share that. And then while we're in the settings menu, might as well talk about some of the other settings that, while you may know about it, um, are just really helpful to have the machine set up as. We really like auto start on this machine, especially when you're using the cup warming tray. It takes 10 to 15 minutes for this machine to get really fully warmed up. And if you want to start auto start, you can add a schedule and set it to whatever date you would like. So if you want to set it to, so we're going to set the current time and date, and then we're going to schedule auto start. So you can set it whatever day of the week you'd like and whatever time you'd like. Please note you can only set uh, two schedules on here and that would be maybe like a weekday and weekend or something like that. But, you know, if you want it to start 30 minutes or so before you're actually going to be making your espresso, if you wake up at 7, set it for 6.30. The cup warming tray is going to be nice and hot. You know, your cups are going to be up here and they're going to be nice and warm, ready for your latte or cappuccino. So another thing about the Oracle Touch is if you've had an Oracle or you've seen the standard Oracle before, you might have seen the advanced menu. On the Oracle Touch, there is no advanced menu accessible by anybody but a technician. And with that being said, most of the settings, if not all the settings that you're going to want to go ahead and adjust are going to be within the standard menu, the drink menus, and some of the custom options with some of the drinks. You're not going to find it in the menu and it's not going to be available but you know, you're welcome to change brew temperature, milk temperature, everything that you need to typically change uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or weekly basis right from the menu. And the last thing is going to be about the porta filter and the group head. This last tip I have to give to you. With the porta filter um, and the group head, there is a warming function in the group head, it actually cycles hot water through, similar to how like an E61 machine does it, but it just does it in a slightly different way. I do see some customers who place their porta filter maybe on the counter, on top of the machine, or into the grinder when they're not using it, but I would suggest leaving it locked in right here. You can feel it get warm, it's going to saturate less temperature from your shots when you're pulling your shots, and it's definitely a better place to store it because this is where it's meant to be. If you're storing it somewhere else and you've been seeing some sourness in your shots or some a little bit too low of a temperature in your shot when it comes to how it tastes, if it's sour, maybe a little dry, maybe a little weak, then I would suggest keep it in here. It's going to just sap a little bit less temperature out of your shot. And the other thing about that is when you pull it out of the group head, there's going to be condensation. Just go ahead and wipe that down before you grind. It keeps everything nice and clean the grinding cycle until you have a dry porta filter and you should be all set to, to start grinding and brewing. So I hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks with the Breville Oracle Touch. I hope at the end of the day one of these tips does help you pull a better shot. So thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing and we'll see you next time.